Are you tired of feeling tired? Are you struggling with vitality and constantly feeling burnt out? And does your body just not feel great? Well, tonight, join the conversation. Join hosts Monique Bradley and wellness expert from My Remedy, Lynette Hill, as they explore the issues, interview industry professionals throughout the duration of this conversation and share bite-sized tips on how to own your health. It's Health Bites, bite-sized pieces of health and wellness information so you can own your health. Well, no my hide in my welcome to the Your Fix TV studio. I'm Monique Bradley, and tonight I'm here with wellness advocate and natural medicine advocate. This is Lynette Hill. Hi, Hi everyone. Lynette. Hi, Monique. How are you feeling tonight? Great. I'm not feeling stressed tonight. Excellent, because that is the topic of tonight's conversation. We're talking about the effects of stress and fatigue in our lives. And look, I, it, I'm, it makes me really sad to say, but stress is an all too common feeling that we all experience at different times of our lives. Now, while I'm understanding through our chats that some stress is really good, such as stress through cardiovascular workouts and, you know, helping you get in the game, get your mind in yeah. it, a little bit of stress as a performer for me yeah. is actually kind of good. Yes. I'm understanding now that stress over a long period of time can actually be detrimental to our health. It can impair our performance and the long-term effects are really bad for our health. Is that right? Absolutely. I mean, we have stress. It's part of what keeps us safe. You know, mm. it prepares us and it helps us to react really quickly. Right. But if we're living in that state all the time, other things are getting damaged or, or not working so well. We're simply actually overloading our body with how much stress we put wow. it under and at that's the moment. Just, that's just not okay. No. That's not okay. No, in not fact, okay. I've even been doing some research this week so we can understand uh, some of the, the stats that are going on, how many people are living their life in that really um, adrenal stress state. Mm -hmm. And that's what we're going to talk about tonight. Mm -hmm. Now, if you do want to uh, join the conversation, feel free to message in. Uh, if you want to stay anonymous, that's okay. You're welcome to do that too. But please um, say hi and um, send in your questions and your comments as we have this conversation. Raja Cheetan from India has just said, good afternoon, gorgeous. Good afternoon to you, Raja. <laughs> now, the topic for the next three weeks is, of course, here at Health Bites, this discussion about the effects of stress and fatigue in our lives and what we can do about it. And Lynette, what I'm really interested in delving into, and I think that's part of tonight's conversation, is the difference between stress caused by external stresses mm. and stress caused by internal triggers. And my understanding from our chats is those are two very separate things. Can you just talk into that a little bit to start off tonight? Sure. So the external stuff is the stuff that's happening to us and the things that we're doing. So you can create a lot of that. And like you say, a little bit of stress, it keeps you sharp and it's really good. It's, it's good to be a little bit nervous about the show tonight yes. and <laughs> what's going to happen so that we're not over, you know, over... Um, prepared for it and become a bit dull it's good to be a little bit stressed before a competition so that you get out there right. and yes. get a bit of adrenaline and, and do those moves it's really important but if you're in that external stress all the time of I've got this to do and that to do and deadlines mm -hmm. uh, you can get to the point where you can't switch off from it so that has a oh, overwhelming yes. stress yes. whereas internal stresses it can be something like um, burns or illness or viruses and things that right. just um, slowly constantly overwhelm us. Okay mm. so I know in my own instance um, I knew a couple um, the, the man was quite unwell um, and the woman was um, the man's caregiver so while mm. her health was optimal the effects of being a caregiver really mm. affected her health mm. and so because of that um, her health became less optimal mm. and his but that was external stresses and his health um, he had external stresses or internal stresses caused by you know being in a state of dis-ease effectively. Yes. Is this quite common as well? Oh it is and and, and and internal stress can be anything like obesity to oh, wow. chronically ill so um, so that that's the one thing and, and sometimes it's easier to deal with your internal stress yourself than it is for the person beside you and so in clinic I see this situation a lot where I'll have someone come to me with chronic internal stress but the person I'm so, sometimes more worried about is the person sitting next to them who's wow. not sleeping. You know, I'm taking so much care of you that I don't take care of myself. And I'm thinking, 
you're going to burn out next and then what good are you going to be for yourself the rest of your family who needs to keep working you know of course it's, and it's, all it's of a that big problem as well. yeah wow and mm. look if you are watching i'm just checking the news feed here joanna vincent said waving hello waving back to you um if you are watching and you've got any questions or you're feeling in a state where you might be a little bit overwhelmed mm. you've got the effects of stress creeping up a little bit too often in mm. your life this conversation is for you. Mm. Uh, you haven't stumbled on this by chance. This is for you. So do send in your questions, and Lynette's more than happy uh, to talk around this subject for you. Yeah, and there's no there's no silly question when it comes to stress because I love stress. You know, I, the the more you give <laughs> it me, seems a weird thing to say. I do. I you know, it, it sort of um, gives me a little bit of get up and go. Um, although I can get overwhelmed eventually, it takes quite a bit. Right. But you know, if, if it's a question in your mind, don't be afraid to ask it here because we'll give you some decent advice or we'll point you in the right direction. And if you don't want to um, us to make a big fuss, you can always get in touch with us privately anyway after okay. the show. Thanks, Lynette. Mm. That's great. So one of the things I wanted to talk with Lynette about tonight. So Lynette is a naturopath, a yes. registered, naturopath, registered naturopath, and she's also the clinical director of My Remedy. A natural health clinic in Milford. So when your your specialist area is really tonight's topic, stress and fatigue, mm. when people are presenting in your clinic, just, you know, for people watching, because, you know, we want to see if there's similar symptoms, mm. what are you seeing when people are walking into your clinic for that first, that first um, appointment with you? It's such a, a wide range of things. So uh, classic stress will be somebody who's just totally wired, um, on you know on edge, mm -hmm. quite close to tears. Just telling me about their situation can be quite a traumatic experience. Um, they're usually having a lot of trouble with sleep. They're they're starting to get quite tired, but they can't switch off. Or when they do fall asleep, they're awake very shortly afterwards, and they're awake all night. Um, people are starting to um, have issues with people at work because everything's a little bit getting on my nerves here. And so you're starting <laughs> yes. to rea overreact yourself. Um, people are having gut issues because of stress. Uh, people are having a really lowered immune function because of stress. So uh, just basically anything that's starting to go wrong can often be sort of traced back to a uh, too much stress or not able to deal with stress situations. Right. Now, Joe Vincent just said, um, I think it's when your get up and go has got up and went that you've got a problem. Absolutely. I totally agree there. That doesn't happen very often, but when it does, it's spectacular. And Zaya Sajid just said, great question, is it better to have medicine to relieve stress? Ah, uh, it, it depends on the great type question. of stress. Yeah, it's a really good question, thank you. Um, medicine, the medicine I use is always natural medicine. Um, but even if um, I have what I consider to be a good medicine, it has to be the right medicine for what you're dealing with. Some people need medication and we're going to talk into chronic stress um, and, and depression and different things. And medicine is absolutely vital when it's um, necessary. And really, unless you can get on top of your stress yourself, you're going to need something to come in and therapeutically support you. So mm -hmm. medicine in some form is usually required. So I'd love to know uh, just out there if you're watching you can indicate by even sharing a heart or um, a thumbs up or a, a sad face if that's how mm. you're feeling mm. and then you can still remain anonymous how many of you may be currently affected by stress in your life or chronic fatigue for example or if you've got somebody in a close proximity in your maybe in your family uh, maybe your partner your kids yeah I'm amazed at how many more kids uh, taking time off school with a sore tummy mm. caused by stress. Mm. And children who are really struggling to fall asleep, uh, they, they can't turn their mind wow. off. Or children who are feeling like they've got to achieve beyond their means or, or do super well in school. Yes. Um, children who are afraid of what people think of them. I mean, these aren't new problems. No. You know, we've all, always had these stresses. But with, I think with you know social media and TV and yes. all of the things coming at us, we feel like we've got to achieve so much more than uh, maybe is realistic. And that's a stress as well. So it starts really young in yes. life. I'm amazed actually there are so many hearts and thumbs and mm. reactions coming through on these channels mm. so clearly mm. 
it is quite uh, quite a, a big issue affecting mm. all ages. I just mm. noticed um, beautiful Miss Brooke Huia, who was runner up in um, Miss Universe New Zealand. She she is on here. Wow. She's been suffering from uh, fatigue herself, mm. and even ended up having to take time off work and off school from that pressure. The pressure of being a public figure as yes. well when you're out being judged. Yeah, being judged. Yeah. Can, can things like that really contr contribute oh, to wellness? Oh, absolutely. I mean, it, you know, every job has got stresses and being judged is one of the hardest ones. And if you're judged on how you look and you're judged negatively on that, I mean, you can't help how you look. If no. you're beautiful, you're beautiful. And, you know, that, that constant putting yourself in front of people and, and not always getting a a positive response to what you do and you know that that's really really hard and you've got to be you know I imagine she's a little bit of a super achiever she's she constantly is. you know you, yeah. you're not there to lose you're there to win right so you're working really really hard at that and if you can balance that by being able to switch off and have a laugh at yourself and have a laugh when someone's a bit mean or anything like that that's a great way you're dealing with stress but Sometimes it's not that easy. Mm, sometimes it is a challenge, isn't it? Zaya Sajid <coughs> said, please <coughs> suggest some fruit to relieve stress rather than taking medicine. Well, here's the thing, Zaya, a really ah. good question. Because your specialist area is natural medicine, mm -hmm. what you're talking about with medicine is really condensed nutrients yes. derived from plants, right? Yeah. There's all sorts of, uh, so I'm, I'm sorry, I'm not sure if we're talking about medicine in the same way. So natural medicine is, is always looking at what's in your diet and lifestyle. So we would really rather you sit down and have a glass of water than take some medicine because that actually gives you a chance to sit down and breathe. And that's a really good thing to do for stress. Fresh fruit and vegetables, you know, they're, you know and grains, you know, things that are high in vitamin C, antioxidants, B vitamins. Um, you know, some fruit are really high, as we were talking about the avocado right. oil. Avocado oil is rich in potassium, yeah. and that helps b uh, balance the potassium sodium levels That's in your body. Right. And if you have too much sodium in your diet, so too much salt, chances are you end up, I learnt this today, you end up with brain fog and fatigue. And dehydration. And dehydration. Yeah. So, yeah, fruit, fantastic. Um, you know, all fruit, I'm not going to choose a fruit, to be honest because that's just a little bit too simple. But as a naturopath, I'm saying, eat your fruit and vegetables. You know, if you're going to put nothing into your body, then your body, your body has got nothing to use. Ah, that's a good yeah. point. So for me, the reason why I'm loving avocado oil at the moment is I'm carb intolerant. I've only learned this in the last three weeks. And that's completely changed my moods, my energy, um, and you know, I had quite, um, I was quite adrenal and quite fatigued all the time. Just a little Just bit. Just a little bit. So <laughs> I can't take in potassium from fruit, so from bananas. So for me, adding mm. um, a little bit of avocado oil into my daily diet means I'm getting that balance without having to have those additional carbs that my body can't process. Mm. It has been a game changer. Mm. I have more energy. I sleep really well. Mm. I'm still excited about life. And I've lost like four kilos in weight. Winning at life. <laughs> so yeah, yeah. It, it, that's been a real game changer mm. for me. Mm. Now, are you finding... When it comes to weight loss as well, people who are in a state of fatigue, does that affect, affect their weight oh, as well? Oh, absolutely. So we're talking about the adrenal cortex here. And if you are constantly um, pumping out adrenaline, your cortisol levels are going to change quite right. significantly. And if you've got high cortisol, you you know, you can live on rice crackers. You're not going to lose anything. Your body's gone into, hey, hold on. I don't know what's happening. Drama. Let's just... Dampen everything down and do nothing. So you're not going to be burning in the way you would if you're relaxed. You know, you're not going to be digesting so well. You're going to okay. be starting to be a storage unit instead of an <laughs> energy think, machine. I think that's what I've been for most of my adult life, <laughs> <laughs> to be fair. Yeah. Wow, so that's that's a real game changer. Um, I'm loving your questions coming in. Um, I am going to grab a message here from Jeb, uh, J. Deb Shax. She said, I, I am from last week's stress, pushed, it pushed my PTSD over the top to burnout. Anxiety mm. I live with every day. Mm. I want to know, um, mm. I, I know um, J.D. Shax, what support do you have for this? Mm. That's what I'd really love to know. Do mm. you have somebody supporting you? Mm. Do you have, are you going to see 
a naturopath or you know do you have some sort of counselor to help yeah. you through let us know and Lynette may be able to refer you to somebody that can actually help because yeah. living with that anxiety and burnout mm. is just not okay I'm yeah. sending you love, by the yeah, way. I wish definitely. I had a heart button. Pushing our heart buttons. Yeah. Uh, definitely, you know, when it's it's long term and there's a, a massive trauma, and often we'll get the the help we need at the time of the trauma, and that's fantastic. But it doesn't always switch the mind off. And mm. sometimes um, there are herbs that we can use that are called adaptogenic herbs, oh, wow. um, and that what they do is they help your body work in maybe a, a more uh, a less reactive, a less adrenal way than just that, oh gosh, that just reminded me of the trauma and I've gone straight into it. So wow. certainly I, I'm really hoping that you've got a good support uh, network around you that somebody's maybe um, able to give you some advice on some things that you can put in your toolkit, whether it be um, meditation, uh, breathing techniques, whether it be yeah, hypnotherapy. Homeopathy is totally fantastic for dealing with um, trauma and helping our body to release the effects of that. Mm -hmm. And of course, you know, diet, lifestyle. When you're stressed, sometimes the last thing you want to do is actually cook a decent meal, oh, just yes. reach for something fast, and that's going to give you instant energy, make you a bit worked up, and then you're going to crash. So getting your diet, your lifestyle, your you, you know, you've really got to work in a situation like that to, to get healthy. Great. So I, I, Thank I you wish you well. Um, so uh, Raja just said, anxiety, the struggle is real. Opening a door or even typing a comment can be a big task. It mm -hmm. took me seven minutes to type this comment. Wow. Raja, what's going on, my friend? Yeah. That's, that's really brave, and that suggests that your level of stress and anxiety is, is really as high as it can get. And, you know, we're really looking at making sure you've got some professional help, particularly that you've been to your doctor, um, made sure that you're safe, that, you know, that in some people, um, it may be a situation for medication or counselling. It may be more than someone like myself, a naturopath is going to be able to deal with. But get to someone that you feel safe with and, you know, get to someone who can make recommendations and make sure that you keep going until you are able to open a door or write a comment without that level of stress. Um, find the person that's going to help you do that. Ask your friends for referrals. And, you know, again, I think I said it last week, if someone reaches out to you and says, I've got this level of stress, even if you think, really, what have you got to be stressed about? You need to listen to that person and, you know, help lead them in the right direction if so they're true. looking for it. Mm. So true, so true. Now, Zaya Sajid has come back with a question. Some people use benzodiazepine. Do you recommend or not? I can't recommend any medication and I will not, not recommend it either. This is something that you've gone to your doctor for. Your doctor, if, uh, if your doctor has put you on a medication, there's a jolly good reason for it. And so you need to take their advice. Um, if you have concerns about that medication, you don't feel that it's answering your, your issue or you're getting the results you want, then you are more than able to go to another doctor for a second opinion. And I think that's always a good idea. Um, also, you can work with, you know, it doesn't have to be a take this or take that. So if you're on a medication for a specific reason, you still need to be doing other things like um, using the medication to get stable, going and getting your counselling, getting um, some help underneath, looking at your diet. You know, it's a, we can't on this show say this is the medicine you need for this condition. We're not talking about... Um, diagnosed anxiety and diagnosed depression. We're talking about stress, daily stress, um, too much stress, and some of the things that we can do, we can do about that. Hopefully, um, because I'm a naturopath, I'm looking at the natural way of doing it. And of course, if you need more than what a naturopath can do, we'd be pointing you in that direction. That's so good, Lenny. Thank you so much. And thank you guys for sending in your questions and your comments. Yeah, good questions. This show, this is great tonight. We we love hearing from you. And Lynette is here to help. And if she can give you any advice or send you in the right direction of, of trying to give somebody or give you an idea of who could help you, that's what she's here to do. That's the vision of the show, really, isn't it? Oh, absolutely. We just want to open up the floor and say these are things that it's really safe. You can sit on your couch and you can ask questions, and that's a really safe format to do that. Um, and, and that's what we're really loving hearing tonight. Mm, that's true. So just very quickly, J J Deb Shacks just said, I've lived with it for years, had many years of help and great doctors. I just mm. need to stop the triggers. 
So, ah, something yes. like hypnotherapy yeah. may work in that instance. Yeah. Is that right? That's right. Um, we are actually hoping to get a clinical hypnotherapist on and also a clinical homeopath on. Um, these, these two fields of natural medicine really look at what are the triggers and the behaviours and the stumbling blocks. You know, no amount of vitamin C or avocado oil yeah, is true. going to really support that, hey, I've got this, this real issue with trauma or self-worth or whatever that stumbling block is. And, you know, changing our mind is really hard, you know, particularly when it's put up what it thinks are safety barriers, but those safety barriers are stopping us getting well. So it'd be really, um, I do hope that you're going to watch hopefully next week or the week after, depending where we lock everybody in. But we're going to have a clinical hypnotherapist um, on who can actually talk about um, changing some of that mind stuff and having your subconscious mind um, freed up to take a bit more care of you with less with less stress yes yeah. thank you um, thank you for that Lynette and thank yeah. you guys for your, your questions and comments JD Shacks just said thank you as did Raja thank you Lynette you're welcome um, also welcome tonight to Leonard Matthews lovely to have you on the stream feel free to ask questions say hi the topic tonight if you have just joined us is talking about the effects of stress and fatigue in our lives and anxiety seems to be unfortunately mm. creeping into the conversation yeah. but I actually did some research around this today and I wanted to share that with everyone because this is incredibly relevant right now we have some new details that have come in from Southern Cross Health Society and if you have a look here at this survey they randomly actually interviewed 2,000 people from it throughout New Zealand for people over the age of 50, the main cause of stress in their lives was to do with health issues or that of their family. Mm -hmm. For people with young families, it was having enough money to live on. For young Kiwis here, um, particularly ones without children, job security and their workload as well as money is a big stress for them. And get this, right at the very bottom of that, uh, of that information, it says females were more likely to be stressed over more than half of the working week. Lynette, I'm absolutely shocked. Are you really? Well, <laughs> I don't, I'm not, I, it saddens me yeah. that we are living yeah. uh, in that constant state of stress. Yeah. yeah. Um, do you think it's worth talking into the show now about what those stresses are? So for people who, who may, may have just joined us and mm -hmm. they, they know it's about stress and, and fatigue, is everyone's experience the same? No, it's not. And that's like what we were saying before. I love stress. You know, I, <laughs> I, I, I love having lots of stuff to do. It gets me up and it gets me going. But I'm very, very fortunate that I think because of my relationships and the, the way I've been raised to think and the fact that I talk all the time so I get it <laughs> out, you know, I'm able to, to process my stress in a reasonably healthy way. I also take, you know, some herbs every now and then to just give me a bit of a bit of a buffer if I'm struggling at night to sleep or switch off. So I deal with it in that way. Someone else who may have had a, you know, some major trauma in their life and it's gone on and on and on and on, you know, you just look at them sideways and it's overwhelmed them. Mm. So we've got a lot more stress coming at us. We have a lot more information, a lot more education. We've got the TV, we turn it on. It's like, oh, let's watch all the bad things that happened today and oh, feel yeah. really frightened Awful. about, you know, stepping out the door. We've got really uh, quite a different educational system than we had. So true. I didn't know why I was at school. I just went there, you know. <laughs> so I was pretty cruisy. I mean, my poor parents, they were stressed. You know, but, you know, our children are like, what are you going to do? And where are you going to be? And it's all so expensive. And you better choose the right thing right now. And parents are trying to, you know, you've got to have three bathrooms now, not just one. And so, you know, we're all just seem to be caught up in this um, world of, of stress where we, we're trying to achieve more than is almost humanly possible mm, mm. Uh, it, it's different for everybody now i noticed a few more people have joined the stream so hello and welcome uh, hello and good evening to sally chapman hello to you my lovely watching from wellington i believe oh. um miranda sophie's just asked would it be better if people sought being checked by a naturopath before there's a big problem when mm. is the right time to seek a consult with someone like you a great question miranda oh very good miranda oh look absolutely if you uh you know my attitude is in our life we need a few good people in our team we need a naturopath because a naturopath is going to say are you on track can you look after yourself can you do that through your diet and lifestyle is there anything i can do to support you so that you can 
go to uni or go to work and get home, sleep and, and be healthy. You need a doctor. You need a doctor to go to to say, hey, I can't do this myself and I'm a little bit worried. What's going on? Can you diagnose this? Can you help me? You need, um, you need a budget advisor if you have trouble with uh, money. Particularly as we saw, you know, as younger yeah. um, people working, yeah. money's one of the biggest stresses. Absolutely. And insurance. insurance Have yeah. you got insurance so if things go wrong? Oh, I don't need to worry too no, much. No, we're not selling it, by the way. Yeah, we're not. We're not insurance <laughs> people. But, you know, that, that's another thing that can reduce our stress. Um, having a good mechanic can reduce your stress. Wow. You know, the, the good friends, good relationships, a counsellor if we need someone. So mm. I think absolutely get in if, you, if you're uh, interested in seeing a naturopath. It's a great idea because we can actually give you some tools to stop you going into um, that really negative state of stress before it gets too chronic. Now, Raja has just messaged in and said one thing, lasses. Uh, here we go. Anxiety, OCD, and depression. Mm. Are they all related? And is it possible that a person can be suffering from all three simultaneously? What are we talking? Anxiety, OCD, well, and, yeah, yep, and, and depression. depression. Oh, absolutely. And they're all different things, but they're all, um, they're not totally separate beings. You know, they're not total different planets. So anxiety can be self created or it can be uh, created through life. Um, and OCD is also, you know, obviously a mental health condition. Mm -hmm. Again, did that happen because of nature, nurture, or a combination of both? And depression is a really big, um, really big mental health area that we are actually going to make a disclaimer about. Uh, I understand later Very on, shortly, yeah. which is really, really important. Um, depression is usually a chemical issue that the body is simply not able to to, to make enough or process enough of a, you know, a brain chemical and sometimes you just need that popped in um, because your body may not be coping and then you can get underneath and look at the OCD and look at the anxiety and just see you know if we can put some some uh, safety nets in place. Yes. So yes Raja it is more common than you would probably um, know because you may not be able to have this discussion with other people around you. In mm. my experience I battled for 15 years with anxiety, I had depression as well, went through that experience and I also had an eating disorder so I suffered really badly mm. with anorexia. So that was what I called my holy trinity. Mm. <laughs> and and yeah. the more that I've spoken to people, the more that I've discovered that it is sadly very common and often oh, it can be triggered by a health condition or triggered by an external stressor. Mm. Mine happened mm. um, post grief. Yeah, you oh, know? grief is, is the, you know, it's kind of like the, the little stone that comes out of the dike and then the whole thing bursts. Yes. You know, all of that pressure's been there, you're just holding it together and then that's the one thing that just lets it all go. And grief is is actually a really good thing because even though that must have been just such a hard time for you, you've actually expressed it, you've you've got to your lowest and you've actually got help and, and now you're pulling your life back together, which is really amazing that you share that. Oh, okay. I'm on, very open you know, with it. everybody. <laughs> I think um, if you're struggling with these things, be um, be very certain that you're not alone and most people hide their stress very well and their anxiety. People don't run around telling everybody that they've you know, got all these things going on. They'd never do that. No, so true. I think there's, there's that idea here in New Zealand that we don't, we don't want to open up and show our weaknesses. Mm -hmm. But I think sometimes part of the, the way to actually heal is to say, hey, I don't feel that great today and I need a little bit of support. And asking for help is a a really, it was a great place for me to start. So if, if you're watching out there and you are struggling with symptoms of stress, anxiety, OCD, ask for help. From, from me to you, please ask for help. Now we're just gonna um, look through some of the symptoms very quickly, because we have so much more, but we're gonna have to wrap it up very yes, soon, because it's a big topic. Um, but we're gonna just have a look. Oh, I'll just flick back to the screen here. Some common symptoms that you may experience in your life of uh, stress and fatigue, headaches and muscle tension, even dry mouth uh, can be associated with this. Lynette, you're looking at some of these symptoms here. Feeling anxious, of course, is a common one. Mm -hmm. And I think, you know, the, the list goes on, but just the, the, big, the big things to look out for are, you know, um, struggling to sleep, 
overreacting to small things. Um, people starting to point that out, feeling tension in your jaw and yes. your neck and always needing a massage. You know, there's some really basic little symptoms. Mm-hmm. And um, needing coffee and energy drinks yeah. to keeping you going there. That's right. Um, you know, lots of feeling of being worn out. And I do want to um, share with you guys while you're watching, over on Lynette's website, myremedy.co.nz, there are some great articles. This is just a screenshot of one of them. Stop the world, I want to sleep. I love that title (laughs) because I know how that feels. Uh, So do head to the website and there are some great articles there. We've got a couple more things that we want to um, Hmm. just round off with you guys before we finish. Um, normally we would talk to you about the health ladder we're going to focus on that next week during the show and how to get you feeling a little bit more stable if you're feeling a bit jittery and a bit wiggly Um, but we do need to let you know that this show is not here to diagnose you this is really important this show is really to give you some ideas on alternative alternatives when it comes to your health we really are here to to guide you to perhaps different options to support you and please know that if you are feeling in that place of darkness or perhaps your stress and anxiety is becoming bigger than you please ask for help these are the contact centers here in New Zealand whether you contact Lifeline, Suicide Crisis, Depression, Helpline, Samaritans, just start the conversation. Mm. Because being in an anxious state is no fun. Mm. And having lived with it for so long, I don't want you to go through what I went through. So ask for help. Now, the team at My Remedy are extremely well versed with looking after you and your help. Uh, you, you and your health, I should say. And um, just before we delve into talking a little bit about your team, just before mm-hmm. we head away, um, um, a couple of messages here. Raja Cheetan just said, thank you so much for addressing this. I'm fortunate I can have a word from you both. Um, I cannot talk about it with anyone, but is it possible to get away from all these three things after 17 years? I think so. I think um, you can at least get some learning strategies. There are people, and maybe if you give us an email and we can have a talk to, to you about some of the options so that we can hopefully lead you to somebody who can help you. Um, but there's always, there's always hope and um, you know, having, having a good team around you is the first place to start. Brilliant. That is awesome. Speaking from my experience, yes. <laughs> She's so, much better now. Oh, so much better. And it's about <laughs> putting one foot in front of the other yeah. and looking for joy. That was one of mm. my that was one of my coping strategies. Mm. Even when I'm feeling anxious, always look for something joyful. Yeah. Uh, Sally Chapman said, "Does PTSD from workplace bullying also add to anxiety and depression?" Oh, absolutely. Because you're there eight hours a day, and if you're not getting on with someone, and someone's being nasty to you. You know, your stomach's churning, you've got adrenaline flowing. Adrenaline makes you act quickly um, and not always with the right response. And then you've got to go back and (laughs) sort out all the things that you shouldn't have just said. Um, It's really hard because you go to bed at night and instead of sleeping and slumbering, your brain is going over and over and over all of the nasty things. And you're you're thinking about the person who's hurt you. That person's no doubt asleep, which really annoys me. So absolutely. And sometimes Monique and I were talking about it earlier that when you've got, um, you know, a a traumatic stress disorder, which you have, which means you're already like that little meerkat going, ah, what's going wrong? Is there anything that can, you know, harm me? And, And you're really... Um, sensitive to everything that you can also experience that bullying in such a deeper way because you are you're already open to it and then of course if you're reactive then that person if they are a little bit nasty is going to be more reactive to you and it's just this horrible snowballing so uh, finding some way of turning your triggers down turning your dials down so that when you're in a stressful situation, you're not so reactive to it. It's actually going to change relationships around you. Wow. It, it, it's quite powerful what being relaxed can do for That's you. That's totally amazing. Miranda Sophie just said, asking for help, accepting that appropriate help mm. and having the courage to act on it. Mm. Seems so simple, but can be so challenging. I agree. Yeah. She said, I agree totally. Having a great team around you is vital. She sent a heart and said, thank you. 
Oh, I know we love that. So What's let's that? a heart. I wish we could heart these we'll back. Send to them you. back. <laughs> now uh, we do want to just introduce you to a couple of coping strategies that could help you if you are based here in New Zealand. One is, of course, working with the amazing team from My Remedy, and we are also proudly sponsored and supported by the wonderful people at South Pacific College of Natural Medicine, who run the Power Clinic here in Auckland. So we're going to introduce you to both of those, so you can get an idea on how to start your wellness journey. Have you ever considered that symptoms may be the outward sign of something deeper and can be just the body's way of saying, help me? I think that's been a big part of tonight's topic. Mm -hmm. Well, the great news is that even small changes from the inside out can affect your whole health outcome. So are you ready to make positive changes? Lynette's team at My Remedy work with you to find solutions for optimal health and can help you with many health challenges. From the common cold through to food intolerances, fatigue and supporting serious health issues. This is Jo, who's a specialist in gut health and gut disorders. This is Kohei, who specializes in allergies, eczema and asthma. This is Lynette, who's been chatting with you tonight on adrenal fatigue and immune conditions. Mike, who we've had on the show before, spoke about, speaks about cardiovascular and men's health. This is Amy, who talks about optimal health through nutrition and naturopathy. This is Kate, the registered homeopath on the team. And for those of you who talked about the effects of the mind with regards to OCD and anxiety, you can talk to Stephanie, who's the clinical hypnotherapist on the team. Now, she helps you with your beliefs, your fears, your habits and behaviours. So if you are ready to create better health for you and your family, try a different approach. Do head to the My Remedy website or you can give them a call on 09 486 2175. My Remedy, it's your remedy. You've got a great team there. Oh, we do. And it's really neat because uh, we've all got our specialties that we really love. And so it means that when someone comes on board, if they don't know what they need to help, um, we might just say, hey, look, it may not be Lynette you need to see, it might be somebody else. And, you know, we can work together and, and really, you know, come up with a plan. Yeah. Now, you are currently also a lecturer at South Pacific College of Natural Medicine. A supervisor. No, supervisor, a supervisor, that's supervisor. right. And the concept there is truly amazing. So all of their final year uh, students in naturopathy and natural medicine get to practice in a fully functioning uh, clinic. Mm -hmm. And you manage that clinic as well? That's right. So the, the students run the clinic and they, it, we have uh, supervisors who are lecturers and naturopaths. Um, you know, who are registered naturopaths so that we've got that qualification in behind us as well. And the good thing about the power clinic is that it's got a full dispensary. And so we're able to actually dispense um, herbal medications and supplements uh, to, to the public who come in for their consultation. Wow. They can help them with stress and anxiety. And our students are incredible and they know when to refer on and when to work alongside med medical professionals. So it's a great starting point. It is amazing. So let's take a look at what the Power Clinic's all about. Welcome to Power Clinic. I'm Robin Carruthers, the Clinic Director. The Power Clinic is a student clinic at the South Pacific College of Natural Medicine. We've got two main functions here. One is to give our students a really good educational experience. They're the ones who staff the clinic and they are supervised by experienced practitioners naturopaths and medical herbalists. Our other role, which is more important, is to provide the community with affordable natural health care. So we have free visits for under six, under six year old children and for people over 65, and our other adult normal fees are heavily subsidised. We see a whole range of people here at Power Clinic, people who've got just minor health complaints, who want to look at a wellness plan, right through to people who are on a range of medications and have quite serious health conditions. A lot of people think of natural health care that if you're taking medications, you can't go to a naturopath. But in fact, we're very careful to um, take that into account and to work around it and support people while they are taking medications that they need to take. So if this sounds like it might be of interest to you, please give us a call and we'll look forward to seeing you and to helping you on your health journey.
So whether you want to go and see the team at My Remedy, all those specialists in each of their areas, or if you want to go and support those students at Power Clinic and help yourself feel amazing mm. and, and find your way to recovery, whatever you choose to do, do something for you. Because yeah. all we have is now, right? That's right. And the only person that can help you is you. So you're going to need to get up off the couch and go and do it. So true. Now, if you want to get in touch with the Power Clinic, here's the details on the screen. You can either head to the website to find out more or give them a call on 09 526 9277. Their students are practicing right up until the end of November. So they'd love to see you in the clinic and help you find your way to wellness. So finally, before we head away, questions just come through from Ursula Pote on the My Remedy page. Hi, Ursula, who's just said, Hi, Lynette, my daughter Paige is a full-time dancer in Melbourne. It's very stressful sometimes to perform at 100% all the time. She can't take Rescue Remedy as that calms her down too much and makes her sleepy. Oh. Is there anything that you can recommend? Absolutely. So for your daughter, and, and dance takes so much out of, of you, so you've got to be really careful that you're not performing on empty or you are going to be using adrenaline. You need that little burst of adrenaline before a competition, but not all through the week. So what um, your daughter really needs to be focusing on is her nutrition, making sure it's really, really full of good whole food so that she's got energy from that. She needs to be taking some B vitamins and magnesium, for example, to, to give her the energy that she, she needs so that she's not dragging it out of her own so body. Um, and being able to do something like um, when she's home from her, her dancing, you know, find some ways to really relax and get down into restoration. So maybe a, a nice bubble bath oh, yes. and lots of water <laughs> to rehydrate. Um, do a brain dump really early. Get home. What's on your mind? What are all the things that might keep you awake tonight? All the problems, all the nastiness, all the niceness, whatever. Dump it all out really early so that by the time you go to bed, there's nothing else to keep you awake. And just really work on deep, restful sleep. And then you can start again tomorrow and be fabulous. That's so good. Um, Ursula, if it, if it helps, I toured with theatre companies throughout New Zealand. So I've been a full-time performer uh, for most of my adult life and struggled with anxiety and fatigue and stress. Mm. And for me, water. Oh, it's Drinking so important. Water. I will do my water talk to all you <laughs> poor people one day. It's, it's nature's best medicine. It was unbelievable. Even in the throes of an anxiety attack, um, mm. one of the first things I would do was have a glass of cold water. Mm. And then I trained myself to believe, and I don't know if it's true, but I trained myself to believe that it was flushing all the extra adrenaline out of my body because I'd have to go to the toilet more. Well, whatever works. And it's really interesting, the uh, rescue remedy thing too, is that we, we need stress in the situation that you've got to perform. So I totally get that. You don't want to be switched off right then. I totally agree. Mm. So some stress is good. Prolonged mm. stress, no, not no, so no. good. <laughs> hey, Lynette, this has been a lot of fun. Mm. Now, here's some updates for all of you watching. After tonight's chat, I'm actually going to set up a private Facebook group, mm. and I will share the links into this. Oh, Ursula just said thank you so much. I'll share the link for tonight's post tonight's discussion into the news feed of these shows tonight. If you would like to join, you're more than welcome to join. And if you've got any questions about anything that we've discussed over the last month of these shows, or anything that's going on right now with any particular topic over the next couple of months, shoot your questions into there. And if Lynette or I can help you, or you know, maybe suggest practitioners in your local area that may mm. be able to help, mm. that's what the show is all about. So I'll set that private group up tonight and I'll share those details with each and every one of you because this conversation is for you. Mm. And it's obvious that this, this conversation applies to a lot of people. And we know that, you know, this is a, a, a new little show. And we really ask you to think about people in your life that may be struggling with stress, which is pretty much everyone in your life. That's so true. And, and please just share this and let people know, hey, here's an open discussion. If you want some help, this might be somewhere to look. Because we're going to try and provide really, really neat experts that can answer questions. Tonight was about setting the scene. But the next two weeks, we're going to have some, hopefully some answers um, and some more direction. So please share tonight's show and let people know that this is coming up in the next couple of weeks as well. Thanks, Lenny. That's awesome. Now, I do want to say a big shout out to the wonderful people at the Power Clinic. 
And also to the team at My Remedy who fully support this show as well. We love you all. Thank you so much. And also, if you want to get in touch with South Pacific College of Natural Medicine, I know they're about they're doing a new intake of uh -huh. students for next year. So if you think that perhaps natural medicine might be the next calling in your life, if you want to make a change, head to their website to find out more. And uh, who knows, it could be a change that gets rid of your stress. Absolutely. There is a little bit stressful studying, but we help you through <laughs> that. And there is an open day coming up. I don't have it in my mind, but if you jump on their uh, Facebook page, or their website, you'll see that open day. What a great thing to do to get along to that beautiful college and, and see what they do. Well, we've loved having you here with us. A big thanks to Pete Ward, who's behind the scenes tonight, producing the show from Your Fix TV Studios. We love having you as part of the show. Remember, watch the show, share it, be part of the show with us, because we love having you here. And let us know what do you want to see share the show, and please remember to visit our partners who support us. That is, of course, My Remedy, the Power Clinic at South Pacific College of Natural Medicine. And check out what else Your Fix TV is doing because mm -hmm. there's some great things going on. Thank you so much for joining us. This has been Health Bites with Lynette Hill and Monique Bradley, bite-sized pieces of health and wellness information so you can own your health. Thank you so much, Lynette. Thank you, Monique. And thanks, everybody, for watching. Ka kite anō. See you later, everyone. Sleep well.